Does Ron Black Lives Matter? Um, and maybe I'm sharing too much, but we become very intimate with the spirits that we call on regularly, right? Like each of them seems to have a different presence and personality. You know, I laugh a lot with Waikisha, you know, and I didn't meet her in her body, right? I met her through this work. It's it's a it's a very important practice. Um, hashtags are for us are way more than a hashtag. It is um, literally almost resurrecting a spirit so they can work through us to get the work that we need to get done. I started to feel personally connected and responsible and accountable to them, um, both from a deeply political place, but also from a deeply spiritual place. And um, always, you know, in, our, in, in my tradition, you offer things that that your loved one who passed away would want, you know, um, whether it's like honey or tobacco things like that. And that's, it's so important, not just for us to be in direct relationship to our people who've passed, but also for them to know they we've remembered them. Um, I, I believe so many of them work through us. Black Lives Matter uh, is ran by three witches who are lesbian witches. Alicia Garza, Patrice Colors, and Opa Tometi, she's of Nigerian descent. They are all three are part of the Black Boule Seeker Society. And there are witches, they're warlocks, and the entire spiritual dogma or doctrine of Black Lives Matter is from the West African religion called Odu Ifa, capital O-D-U, then spacing capital I-F-A. But over 3,000 different religions in Africa, or Akibalon, is rooted in witchcraft and divination. I feel like in our in our tradition in our traditional practice and people who practice you know traditions from West African um, places, uh, one of the big things is remembering your ancestors. And I feel like part of the the story, uh, <clears throat> the building of BLM, was about remembering and and remembering our people, not based off of a white supremacist memory, which would be about you know slandering them and putting their names in the newspaper and showing their mug shots and but instead remembering them from the place that their mothers and their fathers and their family would want us to remember them in, even if we didn't know them personally. So these three witches, uh, Alicia Garza, Opa Tometi, okay, and Patrice Colors, are using the psyop of the witchcraft religion of Odu Aipa, which concentrates on six Teen points of demonic possession and demonic influence through demonic performance of what libations because the term libation means the liquid of darkness when we come out into the streets and we pray you know the first thing that we do when we hear of a murder is we come out we pray we pour libation we built with the community where um the person's life was stolen and it took almost a year for me to realize that this movement is much more than a racial and social justice movement. At its core, it's a spiritual movement because we're literally standing on spilled blood, right? Yeah. And you can't pretend like that's work that's just like some organizing work. That's, you know, that's some serious stuff, right? They give libations, they pour liquid, what they say unto the gods of Africa. It's all built on witchcraft. When we say the names, right? So we speak their names. We say her name, say their names. We do that all the time. That you kind of invoke that spirit. And then those spirits actually become present with you, right? So then Black Lives Matter has 16 chapters in the United States and in Canada, which each chapter represents a name of a god or goddess in the Ifu religion called Odu Ifu, which has 16 points, 16 chapters of demonic possession. Black Lives Matter, they're operating through both omnikinesis and telekinesis. It's witchcraft. Wherever they go to create mayhem and destruction they send witches and every um satellite head every person of these 16 chapters of black lives matter they are a witch and a warlock so with black lives matter they have molded themselves after a serpentine psychology all three of these women's women are witches they're warlocks spirituality is at the center of black lives matter um and I think that's not just for us. I feel like so many um, leaders and so many organizers um, are deeply 
engaged in, in a pretty um, important spiritual practice. I don't think I could I could do this work without that. I don't think I could do it as long as I've done it and as consistently. Um, it feels like if I didn't do that, it would be antithetical to this work. To defeat Black Lives Matter, to defeat the ANC, you can't defeat these organizations through the barrel of a gun. You can only defeat the ANC and Black Lives Matter through spiritual warfare. First and foremost, I would like to say all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Rakar Kedash. Double honors to the elders of GMS, who I learned this truth from. I would like to give a salutation to all the Akim out there that's preaching this word in righteous and sincerity throughout the four corners of the earth. Also a shalom to the Israelite foreigners out there, the speckled bird, who are going to come looking like other nations, but who are Israelites. Shalom, man. Black Lives Matter founders confess witchcraft. We have told you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native American Indians, and Seminole Indians, man, to not follow after these organizations, man. But in particular, you Negroes in this matter. You Negroes are running and following behind Black Lives Matter. Their, their founders are witches and warlocks set up by the Black Boule, who is set up by who? The Illuminati, George Soros, man. Okay? This is what you're running behind. This is what you're putting on your sticker on your cars or signs in your yards, man. You are promoting witchcraft, man. All right? So with that being said, let's get into some scriptures, man. This is Exodus chapter 20, verse 3. Thou shall have no other gods before me, man. And that's it, man. You Israelites, you don't supposed to put no other god before Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shai, period. In no shape, form, or fashion, man. All right? This is Exodus 22 and 18, man. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live, man. Okay? Plain and simple, straight to the point, man. All right? Let's go to the book of Leviticus, man. But you so-called Israelites, man, you so-called Jakes out there, man, you are quick to follow behind anything, man. You are not going to get no justice in this society, man. The justice come through Yahweh Bush and Yahweh Shah, man. During the second coming, man. Okay? No organization. <laughs> it doesn't matter, man. It's not going to liberate you, man. Only Yahweh Bush and Yahweh Shah is going to liberate you, man. When Yahweh Shah cracked those clouds with the angels, man. All right? Anything else is a setup, man. And it's going to fall, man. All right? This is. Leviticus chapter 20, verse 6 and 7, man. And you know what? I'm going to start at verse 5. Then I will set my face against that man and against his family, will cut him off, and all that go a horn after him to commit whoredom with Molech from among their people. And the souls that turn up after such as have familiar spirits. And after wizards to go a horn after them, I will even set my face against that soul and will cut him off from among his people. Sanctify yourselves, therefore, and be ye holy, for I am the Lord your God, man. And holy means separate, man. Okay? We don't supposed to deal with the idols of the heathens, man. Okay? <laughs> Let's get the book of Deuteronomy, man. And this witchcraft of theirs is found out of West Africa, man. You know, among them Hamites, man. But you got some Israelites over there in West Africa that participate in this witchcraft as well, man. But they got it from them Hamites over there, man. That's in West Africa, man. You know, but as well, we have Israelites in West Africa as well, too. This is Deuteronomy chapter 12. 
verse 30 and 31. All right. Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 30 and 31. Take heed to thyself that thou be not snared by following them after that they be destroyed from before thee and that thou inquire not after their gods saying, how did these nations serve their gods? This is what our people do. Even so, Will I do likewise, though shall not do so unto the Lord thy God, Yahweh, for every abomination to the Lord, which he hateth, have they done unto their God. For even their sons and their daughters, they have burnt in the fire to their gods. And amen. And northern and southern kingdom have been guilty of this, man. You know, the northern kingdom did was doing that. Before Christopher Colon got over here, you know, doing human sacrifices and shit. All right. But nevertheless, man, you know, Jake is guilty of this, man. All 12 tribes. This is Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 10 to 12, man. There shall not be found among you anyone that make of his son or his daughter to pass through the fire or that use divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, nor a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard or necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God do drive them out from before thee. Once again, this is how we fell out the grace of Yahweh, but Shem Yahweh shot, man. Okay? Doing these heathen practices, man. These heathen customs, all right? This is 2 Kings chapter 17, verse 17. And I'm going to start at, yeah, 17. And they caused their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire and use divinations and enchantments and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. Hey, man, this is what our people always did, man. And nothing's new up under the sun, as we see. This is 2 Kings chapter 21, verse 6. And he made his son pass through the fire and observe times and use enchantments and dealt with familiar spirits and wizards, he wrought much wickedness in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. You see how that's a constant theme? This is 2 Kings chapter 23, verse 24. Moreover, the workers with familiar spirits and the wizards and the image and the idols and, the abomin and all the abominations that were spied in the land of Judah and in Jerusalem did Joshua put away that he might perform the words of the law which were written in the book Salakia, which were written in the book of Hakia, the priest found in the house of the Lord. Okay. So Joshua knew about it, man. Joshua put that away, man. Let's go to um, Second Chronicles. This is Second Chronicles. Chapter 33, verse 6. But you see, example after example, man. Yahweh, but Shem Yahweh is not with it, man. And he calls his children to pass through the fire in the valley of the son of Hinnom. Also, he observed times and used enchantments and used witchcraft and dealt with familiar spirits with wizards. He wrought much evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. Okay? So if you're practicing this, man, you're provoking Yahweh and his son, Yahweh Shah, to anger, man. All right? This is Isaiah chapter 8, verse 19. And we know Yahweh gave all judgment to his son, Yahweh Shah, man. So this is who you're going to have to deal with, man. This is Isaiah chapter 8, verse 19. 
And when they shall say unto you, seek unto them that have familiar spirits unto wizards that peep and that mutter, should not a people seek unto their own God for the living to the dead? Let me read that over again, man. That's powerful. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 19. And when they shall say unto you, seek unto them that have familiar spirits and unto the wizards that peep and that mutter, should not a people seek unto their God? Right. Leave that witchcraft alone. For the living to the dead. So you're going to trade in Yahweh and his son Yahweh shot for the dead? Come on, man. All right. Let's go to Isaiah. Well, let's continue to stay in Isaiah chapter 47, verses 11 to 14, man. All right. Isaiah chapter 47, verses 11 to 14. Therefore shall evil come upon thee. Thou shalt not know from whence it rises, and mischief shall fall upon thee. Thou shalt not be able to put it off. Desolation shall come upon thee suddenly, which thou shalt not know. Stand now with thy enchantments and with the multitude of sorcerers where when thou hast labor from thy youth. If so be, thou shalt be able to profit. If so, thou mayest prevail. Thou art wearied in the multitude of thy counsel. Let now the astrologers, the stargazers, the monthly procrastinators stand up and save thee from these things that shall come upon thee. Behold, they shall be as stubble. The fire shall burn them. They shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame. There shall not be a coal to warm at, nor fire to sit before it. There you have it, man. You have a shot said. Go uh go to them guys that you put before him, man. Ask them to save you in your time of need. All right. And we know how that's gonna end up. Let's go to the book of Judges, man. Let's get the book of Judges, man. Because once again, man, this is very repetitive all throughout the scriptures, man. The Lord is not with this, man. He's not with it at all. Never have been, man. But you Jakes, you continue to dwell and dabble into this, man. And the same results happen every time. Death. Okay. This is Judges chapter 10. All right. Verse 14. Go and cry unto the gods which ye have chosen. Let them deliver you in the time of your tribulation. Let me read that over again. For those of you who want to dwell in witchcraft. Go and cry unto the gods which ye have chosen. Let them deliver you in the time of your tribulation. That's right, man. Your time of trouble, man. Let's go to the book of Micah, man. And this is Micah chapter 5. Verse 12, and I will cut off witchcraft out of thy hand, and thou shalt have no more soothsayers. That's what Yahweh Bushim Yahweh Shah going to do, man. And I'm going to end it in Revelation chapter 21, verse 8. Okay. But the fearful and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death, man. It's when those nuclear missiles are going to hit America, man. Okay? Because there is no such thing as a place called hell. Hell does not exist. Matter of fact, hell is nothing more than a condition. We're in hell right now under damn Esau. How about that? So with that being said, I hope this lesson was edifying. I hope those who come across it receive some type of edification. Hey, man, leave Black Lives Matter alone. It's pure satanic and witchcraft. So with that being said, all praises to Yahweh, but Shem Yahweh Shah, Rakaq Kadash. Shalom, family.